Hello and welcome back to London, the Computing Conference 2018. I'm joined by Carl Chalmers. Hi Carl, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Good, Great, thank yeah. you. Um, you're associated with the Liverpool John Moore University. What exactly are you doing there? Um, so what we're doing is looking how we can apply um, machine learning techniques for analysing smart meter data. Um, and what are those smart meters? So smart meters replace traditional meters where you usually have a guy come around to your house taking your meter readings to give you billing. Right. So what smart meters do replace that mechanism and um, they do what's called automatic meter readings. Mm -hmm. So they report energy usage in real time back to your energy suppliers. And what we're hoping to do is to exploit that data to mm -hmm. look at behavioural trends in people who are okay. suffering with dementia. Yep. It, especially people with the, the dementia and you're using the meters that are already there in the houses or are you placing them? No, they're already installed in the houses. In fact, between now and 2020, the government will install over 50 million smart meters in the UK. Okay, yeah. And um, what we're hoping to do is piggy piggyback off that infrastructure um, to collect the samples in real time. We've already done some clinical trials in the area. Um, but by detecting what appliances people are using around their home, yeah. we can discover what activities of daily living they're undertaking. And that's a really important metric for clinicians to understand how you are actually coping ah, within okay. your own home. And can you name some examples? What can you learn from those kinds of data? So within um, dementia field specific specifically, we're looking for sleep disturbances because mm -hmm. obviously patients that have sleep disturbances right. are concerned. Yeah. Um, but in dementia particularly, there's a, it's a condition called sundowning syndrome. As you sort of progress um, with the dementia, um, your body clock comes um, basically switched Changes, around, so yeah. you start um, becoming more active in the evening opposed oh, really? to the daytime. Yeah. And obviously if you start apply, um, interacting with appliances in the evening more often, that's a good indication right. to the clinician that you might be progressing with the disease. Yeah. But also just the total absence of usage, so if historically you always get up in the morning, put a kettle mm -hmm. on, make your toast, and then on the third morning you don't do any interactions, ah. that could be an indication that you might have fallen or you've not got out of bed in the morning. So that's good, and, and you're working together with the, the, the appliances um, um, organisation that's delivering them to the homes or? Um, so no, we, we, we do do some work with Smart Energy GB, who's the smart meter rollout. Right. We also work with a company called Chameleon Technologies, um, and they basically make the CADs, mm -hmm. which is the devices that interface with the smart meters. Yeah. And then on the clinical side of things, we partner with Merseycare NHS Trust, which is a right. huge trust that deals with mental health. Um, and they basically provide the clinical expertise, but also access to the patients, which is more crucial. Right. And, and how far have you progressed so far? Um, so we've done a six-month clinical trial, mm -hmm. um, which basically detected the interactions of the electrical appliances. And we've had some clinical inputs about those results. Right. Um, but it raised another research question, is, is that can you actually gauge the progression of dementia just mm. from device interactions? So we're just um, planning a two and a half year longitudinal study okay. to measure those correlations between appliance usage yeah. and the steady progression of dementia. And that's the current phase you're in? That's the current phase we're in, yeah. And have yeah. you seen any breakthroughs so far? Have you seen some insights that are worth sharing? Yeah, so I mean, we've detected when there has been abnormalities in energy usage. So we um, we, we rang up Mersey Care in a bit of a panic because one of the hmm. patients wasn't interacting with them. Uh, with the electrical appliances and it turned out he'd just gone fishing so it, it, it does work <laughs> so um but the idea of the technology is that we'll have a sort of traffic light system yeah. so if it's just a slight abnormality the family members can check on the mm. person and then if that's not action then it could be moving it up further so it'll up, be escalated escalated up but the ultimate goal for the system is we can prove the correlation between device and progression uh, interactions and progression is that we can use it for a clinical decision support system so it can help clinicians intervene when there's been severe relapses in behavior yeah, yeah. and what's the reaction of the patients so far and their families maybe well they like it because um current solutions are quite intrusive and they're mm. quite complex and they require interaction so you usually have like a, a pendant alarm on your body yeah. maybe passive sensors fitted around your home this requires no additional interactions it's with the devices there. that you usually use yeah. so you've got to make um tea in your microwave or you've got to yeah. make a cup of tea using your kettle so it's not expecting them to use any other technology and they like that it's just constantly monitoring them this is the normal life and then their normal being life monitored. normal yeah. routine and then we just look for the alterations in that routine well fascinating um privacy is one of the subjects that we're hearing a lot about also dur during the conference yep. um, how have you dealt with that so and um, we don't hold any clinical data at the university and um, basically we just get the energy data so mm. from the energy data you can't infer a person's identity um, at okay, the end of the yeah. trial we match it up with a, a basically a hashed um, a id number mm -hmm. that we, we correlate with the doctors at the end so it's, it's really anonymous it's anonymous and, yeah. and you've got to remember this is data that is being collected anyway right. so if you have a smart meter then this is just data that's normally collected yeah. so yeah and maybe the doctors they have 
a privilege to actually see who the patient is or not? So yeah, so I say we marry it up at the end. So we, we assign a sort of random ID that's mm -hmm. attached to the energy values and they have that ID which corresponds to their patient ID. Yeah. So they can marry it up that way. So we don't have to see any of the patient's information, only the clinician will see that information. Well, ideal, yeah. Yeah, exactly. What are your goals for the future, taking this further? So um, we've got two sorts of strands with it, is, is that we can use the technology to give to someone like a carer, that mm -hmm. you can just see the appliances that are being used, and I yep. say, moving f further into the future is using it for that clinical decision support. Right. If we can see those relapse in the cases early, and yeah. then those behaviours associated with it. So that will be like an orange light in, the, in your traffic light? Yeah, basically. so if you know we see disturbing changes in behaviour, it might mean that we can intervene before people get admitted to hospital. Right. It also may mean that people can be um, discharged from hospital, mm -hmm. so you hear the term bed block and it costs the NHS £250 yeah. a night because wow. there's no support services at home. Yeah. So if you could send them home with this care package, could you discharge them from hospital and Make them sooner? a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, and, and just, just make them um, make it a bit of a safer environment because the ultimate goal is to try and age well with dementia that's the, right. the goal of clinicians mm -hmm. and that happens better if you're in your home, own home in your own environment most dementia patients when they get severe with this type of condition they have to move out right. so can this technology enable to live more independently in the home for longer periods of time well that would be great hopefully thank you very much for our talk if you want to see some more videos uh, go ahead and click on them i hope to see you later so bye bye